make sense. Now, once again, I want to cue to some of the safety precautions here. I'm going to say this at least three times throughout today's episode. As I'm talking now and various other times throughout today's episode, you may get the impression that I'm all for everybody doing psilocybin, and that is simply not the case. In order for a psilocybin journey to be therapeutically useful, it does require certain conditions and supports, and there are certain people for which psilocybin use is going to be contraindicated, meaning they should not do psilocybin. In particular, people who have existing or have a predisposition to psychotic episodes or bipolar episodes. Even having a first relative who has bipolar or schizophrenic or schizotypal issues can be a rule out condition that is can get someone eliminated from a clinical study on psilocybin for fear of triggering psychotic episodes, not just during the psilocybin journey, but potentially in a longstanding way. So again, that's really critical. The other thing is that everything I'm talking about today, unless I say otherwise, is really focused on adults, meaning people who are 25 years old or older, that is their basic wiring and rewiring of the brain that we call developmental neuroplasticity is completed, all right? Most of the studies today that I'll talk about involve subjects ranging from 25 years of age out to about 70 years of age, but no one younger. So again, psilocybin and its use is certainly not for everybody. It's still illegal. It's being used in the clinical setting and research setting. There are these pockets of decriminalized areas and potentially soon legalization of psilocybin, but again, only in the proper clinical setting. Okay. Again, I say that not just to protect myself, but I say that also to protect all of you. Psilocybin is a powerful, powerful drug, not just to be under the influence of, but also in terms of its longstanding changes after the effects of psilocybin 